Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Brooke and you're watching Hooked on Brooke. Today I'm going to be talking about two ways of preserving fresh bait. So make sure you stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. Come on, come on. Today I'm stocking up on freshly caught Australian Bonito for the freezer. These guys are simply one of the best baits around. If you haven't seen the previous video on catching Australian Bonito to this one, make sure you check it out. So this is what we're catching today guys, little Bonitos. But for now, let's get to preserving this awesome bait. Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Anyway, so now that I've got my bait, I want to show you two simple ways to preserve them. So one way I'm going to cry back them or vacuum seal them and the other way I'm going to salt them. Crybacking or vacuum sealing, whatever you want to call it, is actually a really good way to preserve any kind of food and today I'm going to be preserving my bait. So this is going to store in the freezer for up to 12 months, no problem. So I usually like to portion up my fish into bags of two or three depending on the size of them. Today I'm going to do the smaller ones in threes and the couple of big ones I've got there I'll do in a two pack. So what I like to do is roll out my bag and then I can cut it to the right length. Got my scissors. So I'm going to do three about this size. I'm just going to measure the bag. So I've already sealed this end of it. I'm going to give it a fair bit of gap at the top there. So I'm going to go about there. Now I'm just going to take some paper towel and pat the fish nice and dry so that there's no moisture being sucked into the machine because my last machine died because I think it got a bit of moisture into the electronics so I like to just pat them dry now so that there's no chance of that happening. Now that I've got my fish in there, I can put her in the cry back up. Very simple, I'm just going to place the plastic on top there and then close the lid down. I've got this machine set to moist and now I'm going to press the vacuum and seal button. So what it's doing now is actually starting to suck all the air out of the bag and then after that it'll seal the bag off. So now that the blue button is the seal button's gone off, I can pop her open. And that's my finished product. So again, I'm just going to seal this end first. This is actually a continuous roll of just a hole. And then you just seal each end as you go. Um, they do have pre-made bags in the pack as well, but I just prefer to do it this way so I've got less wastage. set it to dry. I have dried them off a fair bit. I can always press cancel if I'm a little bit concerned about any moisture getting into the pump. So let's try it on dry, vacuum and seal. Again sucking the air out. This time it's going to suck a lot harder. I can see the moisture coming out of the fish here but it definitely got a better seal than the last one. A lot less air in there. And the seal's done. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. I like that better. So that's my perfect little seal Beninos. And that's so simple to do, guys. Like, I don't know why everyone doesn't do this. If you're gonna go out and catch bait, um, this is gonna last up, you know, 12 months or so down the track. I'm still gonna have perfect Bonito that aren't gonna be freezer burnt or anything like that. And whenever I go on a trip, I can just take a bag, I can see what it is, it's nice and easy to use. Alright, so let's get down to salting now. Salting is actually one of the oldest known ways to preserve any kind of foods, and this is going to be perfect for my Bonito. Bonito have a very, very soft flesh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the fillets off these fish, because by leaving it whole and salting it, it's probably not going to get it right to the core. So if I cut the fillets off, at least the salt's going to get to both sides of the meat and the skin and dry it out really nice. I've got my paper towels to get the fillets really nice and dry before I put them in the salt. I've got a nice big bucket here, just an old chlorine bucket I'm pretty sure. 
So that's where my salt's gonna go. And then I bought a big bag of salt, pool salt from Bunnings. And I've just put some in a bucket here. I'm going to make sure my bucket is nice and clean and dry. Because any moisture and water is gonna make that salt turn very watery and make a bit of a slurry. So I'm gonna pour some salt into the bottom of this bucket first. Just got a scoop to make it easier. So this is the salt that I have. It's just really coarse pool salt and that's fine. If you were gonna salt your fish for human consumption, I'd probably not recommend pool salt and I do recommend not using iodized salt. That's what I've read on the internet, so just use salt that doesn't have iodine in it. About an inch worth of salt in the bottom of my bucket. And now I'm gonna take the fillets off my fish. These fillets are actually pretty small, but I wouldn't use that as a whole strip bait if I was fishing. So I'm probably gonna cut these in half down the center or even across like this. So now that I have the rest of the fillets off my Benito, that can go on the freezer as burly. First of all, we're gonna dry off the little chunks that we've already done. So these little guys. Make sure they're nice and dry, so what the salt does is it actually takes all the moisture out of the fish and dries it out, <clears throat> making it nice and tough and no bacteria and stuff can live on it because the salt gets rid of any of that. So I'm just gonna lay these guys down. Once I've filled up the bottom part of the container and I can't fit any more pieces in there without them touching each other, then I'll put another layer of salt on it. The bonito I have today is the perfect sort of thickness. You don't want it any thicker than like one to two centimeters, otherwise then the salt can't penetrate quick enough before the fish starts going off. So I'm gonna put these in here for about six hours at least, or overnight, which is probably what I'll do today. So I will show you tomorrow morning what they look like. They should be nice and dry, and probably a little bit curled up, and nice and tough. Now that I've got the layer of fish and the salt on the bottom, I'm gonna put another layer of salt on top. Making sure that everything's covered. Perfect, now I'm gonna start another layer. I'm actually gonna cut these guys into strips instead of squares. This is a fairly long process, having to fillet the fish, cut it up, put it into the salt, wait for it to cure, dry out. So salting the bonito is actually a really good idea if I'm planning a big trip, so if I'm going over a few days or something like that. So I can have my fresh bonito thawed out for the first couple of days, and then after that if I run out of bait and I've got nothing else left, the salted fish is perfect because it's going to keep longer than anything else. So this is always good to have on handy if I'm going to be out for a long trip. Put some more salt on the top of this now. Now that my fish is completely covered, I can't really tip that up because it's going to mix it all up, but everything is completely covered with salt. I reckon I've probably used about Two, maybe three kilos of salt there. Gonna put the lid on. Hey guys, so it's the following morning and I really wanted to get this fish out of the salt and cry back in. So let's have a look what it looks like now. Just gonna lay some paper towels down. Wow, so that's really nice and tough now. Still feels like it's got a fair bit of moisture in it. Um, I'm going to cry back this and freeze it anyway, so I don't think that's a problem. This is going to be nice and tough for those, those fish that are pickers and pick off all your bait all the time, so this will be perfect. I'm basically just going to leave it with a little bit of salt on it like that. Just get them all out so we can have a look. 
So digging through my bucket here, there's a lot of moisture on the bottom. If I was to do this in a better way, I probably would have drilled holes in the bottom of the bucket and left this to sit in a place where it could just drain out onto like a, a container or something like that. And leave it to sit for a little bit longer so the fish could cure a bit more. They are quite damp still, but I think that they've definitely dehydrated. Look at that. It's very, very firm, very, very strong flesh now. If I was to do this properly, I probably would wrap this stuff in newspaper for a few hours and let the rest of the moisture soak out of it and then cry back it, but I don't actually have time today, so I'm just going to lightly get rid of some of the moisture so that I can cry back. It's not an overly strong smell, it still smells a little bit like panino, but it's not a super strong smell. Alright, that's all ready.